Dr. Andy Pavanka again with Correct Scoliosis and Pavanka Chiropractic. And we're here today with our special guest, Dr. Jeb McAveeny from Australia. He's the developer of the Scully Brace, and he also runs Scully Care in Australia. And he's here today uh, in our clinic to help us with a few patients, and he's also uh, been gracious enough to answer a few questions for us and produce this video. So, number one question we have, get a lot of questions about Dr. Jeb is, um, should a child find out they've got scoliosis, what's the parent's action steps to kind of weed through the information out there on the internet and try to distill it down and get to a point where they can find the right treatments? Okay. It's a, it's a question we get asked a lot, and there's a, there's a lot of information on the internet. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. Uh, I suppose one of the things that uh, I would advise parents is that they have to be a little bit careful about some of the claims that people make on the internet. You know, the internet is uh, not a regulated place and um, you know, people can make some extravagant claims about you know, things that they can do for scoliosis that aren't backed up by the research. So I think the first thing is really to understand you know, what type of scoliosis the patient has, how big the scoliosis is, right. and then understand what the progression risk is. You know, younger children that haven't gone through their growth spurt are obviously at a much higher risk than children who, are, who have gone through their growth spurt. And then it's about trying to pick the right treatment for, for the case. You know, if the child is young and they have a moderate curve of 20 or 30 degrees, that actually is a high risk. And the research shows that you know, those high risk progressive cases can't be treated with exercise alone or chiropractic or massage or physical therapy as the only treatments. There's nothing wrong with those treatments as part of an overall treatment program. But um, you know, really when we have a high progression risk, the child needs a brace. And the evidence is very clear about that. Um, there was a great study published in the Journal of um, New England Journal of Medicine in 2013, and that showed that if you use a brace, even though the braces they used in that study weren't necessarily the best braces in the world, in, in most cases you can stop a child from progressing. Um, and the new technology that we're using with the Scully brace, we're actually demonstrating correction in, in many of those cases. Our next question, which is, you know, how has the technology over the last five to ten years changed? You know, back in the day it was Milwaukee braces, you know, hard shells, long uh, metal rods under your chin, and now we've got uh, advances like the Scully brace. What, what's changed over the last five to ten years to uh, bring about you know, improvements and enhancements? Yeah, it's, um, it's really interesting. Like everything in medicine, there's, there's always advances, and you know, what was done in surgery 20 years ago is not done now. Same is true for bracing. What was done 20 or 30 years ago, we've moved past that in a big way. And that starts from the patient assessment through to the actual braces that we use. So in the past, to make a brace for a patient, we used to either cast them or you know, wrap them in elastic bands according to a certain classification depending on the type of brace that you use. Um, now with the advent of modern technology, we can use 3D laser scanning. We can create a 3D model of the patient's back. And based on that scan, we can do a full 3D analysis that really helps us to understand the patient curve and their distortion in three dimensions. Right. Once we have that info, we can then go ahead and make a, a three-dimensional brace. Now, traditional old-fashioned braces, such as the Boston brace, used to be very two-dimensional. They squeeze the curve from you know, one to three directions, we call it three-point pressure, and, and they didn't really think three-dimensionally. And, and those braces get mixed results. You know, some doctors don't use them anymore because the results weren't great. But that was in the past. With 3D scanning technology and the 3D approach to bracing, we can fully correct that posture in three dimensions. And depending on how stiff the curve is, we can usually get a substantial correction of the curvature as well. So bracing has changed a lot. It's nothing like it used to look like in the 70s and the 80s. These new approaches um, not only look different, but they're getting different and better results. Right, and we've definitely seen it in our clinic. I mean, our scully brace results have been phenomenal. Um, and then that leads us to you know, these kids eventually grow up, they become adults, um, and some people have had scoliosis as, a, as, a, as an adolescent that maybe was mild, but now as an adult that scoliosis has progressed, and now they're having pain from it. They're told by their doctors, you know, you have scoliosis, you're going to have to live with it. Um, what kind of options would you say adults have at this point then for treatment of scoliosis? I, we talked about a stat last night. What was that stat on people who have scoliosis? Yeah, most people don't think about adults with scoliosis, but in fact, um, 60 uh, sorry, 30 percent of adults over the age of 60 have a scoliosis. That increases to 50 percent of patients over the age of 90. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same type of scoliosis necessarily as we see in kids when they're growing. It's called adult degenerative scoliosis or degenerative de novo scoliosis. 
So if we talk about just those cases for a second, they're often told that there's nothing that can be done for them because their body's collapsing, they're bending forward. And, and the way I normally explain it to people is they need scaffolding. Either they need it from the inside to try and correct them, which is surgery, right. or they need it from the outside, which is a brace. Basically because their spine is wearing out, it's collapsing under the load of gravity. Um, and since we've started doing adult bracing, we found that we can support those patients, they feel less pain, their posture improves, and their progression decreases. So that there are certainly non-surgical options out there for adults. Right. And that's, and that's a big step I've seen. We have a lot of people that in the past we'd have to turn them away for bracing because the bracing that we had wasn't um, proper to use on people with larger curves because it would cause them to advance and get worse. So the Scully brace has been a huge improvement as far as our ability to treat adults and uh, specifically the elderly uh, and give them relief and, and options that we couldn't give them in the past. So that's been, been awesome. Um, another thing we want to talk about is uh, different methods for um, you know, rehab uh, type exercise programs for scoliosis and there's a lot of them out there. We get a lot of questions about the different types that are out there. What are your, what are your opinions on those? Are, are any better than others or any, uh, any types of scoliosis better for different types of exercise programs? What would you say? Yeah, I think that it's, it's important that whenever you go to a clinic, you want to go to a clinic that has a range of options. Your, your clinic, you've got chiropractic biophysics rehabilitation, you've got a spine core brace. You've got the nighttime scully brace, you've got part-time scully brace, you've got the adult scully brace. So it's about trying to give the patient the right treatment at the right time. And that's our philosophy with scully care. Um, in my own clinics, we, we have an exercise program that we use. And in certain cases, you might use exercise alone when the curve's very small, right. you know, 10 or 15 degrees. Or if the patient's fully mature and they're not at a risk of progression, but they've got pain, maybe it's a, a 30-year-old lady with chronic low back pain and a 30 degree scoliosis exercise can work really well in terms of controlling the pain and helping the function. But we know categorically from the research that exercise rehabilitation alone does not stop curves above 25 degrees progressing in kids. And unfortunately, there's a lot of conflicting information out there on the internet. It's not evidence, it's opinion. You know, there's people telling you that you can go and do two-week camps and straighten up the curve and you know that that can work. But if your dose of treatment is two weeks, the child is growing for three or four years through the growth spurt. Right. You know, from what I've seen personally, that type of approach doesn't work. Right. Um, that's the type of approach with rehab. A scoliosis specific approach is important. You know, we know that going and doing yoga, swimming, general core exercises, those things don't have any um, positive effect in terms of curve progression. If you search on Medline on the internet, you can find that there is some growing evidence behind more scoliosis specific um, exercise programs, but again, it's really just for those small curves or for those curves that aren't at that high risk of progression. Well, um, I mean, the information that you have put out there is, is invaluable, and we do really appreciate you being here with us today. Um, if anybody has any questions um, about scoliosis, feel free to get on our website, correctscoliosis.com, shoot us an email, we'll do our best to address your questions. Um, and if you have any needs, if you have you know, scoliosis you're dealing with, whether it's yourself or your child or a family member, don't hesitate to call us. We'll do our best to make sure you get what you need. Again, I'm Dr. Andy Pavanka with Correct Scoliosis. Again, I'd like to thank Dr. Jeb McAveeny for being here today. And uh, again, if you have any questions, just give us a call.